In this video, I plan to go over everything about CCUs. And by the end of this video, you should know more than enough to get the most out of CCUs. This video is a follow-up to that video on my channel. I encourage you to watch that if you plan on upgrading or acquiring or modifying your fleets for any of the events throughout the year, but specifically IAE or Fleet Week. Let's begin. As usual with these types of videos, I share a table of contents. We'll first discuss the basics, like what a CCU actually is, and then we'll move on to the meat and potatoes of the subject and talk about how you can leverage CCUs to get the most benefit for yourself throughout the year, not just IAE. I'll include examples, and we'll also discuss common mistakes that you will want to avoid. So let's start with the basics. For the new backers out there, you may be saying, what are CCUs anyway? CCU is an acronym for Cross Chassis Upgrade, and this is a standalone item that you can use to upgrade from one ship or vehicle to another. Going forward in this video, we will refer to the actual CCU item that goes into your hangar as a CCU token. Here are some key details related to CCU tokens to keep in mind. One, CCU tokens can be purchased with cash or store credit. Emphasis on store credit. Two, CCU tokens are a standalone item that goes into your hangar when you purchase it. Three, CCU tokens can be melted, and once melted, they go into your buyback list just like any other game package or standalone ship, for example. For standard CCU tokens, once applied, simply change the ship on the base package. The best way to visualize this is to just imagine the ship or vehicle that you want to upgrade to being taken away from its associated pledge package and then applied to your existing package, inheriting the existing package's perks and insurance. The only caveat to this is the war bond CCU, which we'll discuss right now. The Warbond CCU. Warbond CCUs are different in the following ways. First, you must use 100% cash to buy this upgrade. You cannot use store credit. And the other point is, the insurance on the new ship, if it is better than your current pledge, gets inherited by the overall pledge once acquired. This ensures that you get the best perks when using a Warbond CCU. And most importantly, you get the best insurance. Now let's talk about how you can get the most out of both types of CCUs. For this, Let's talk about the different methods in which you can leverage CCU tokens themselves. The first one is the CCU buyback token. As stated, CCU tokens are their own item in your hangar, so they are able to be melted just like most other items that sit in your hangar. This means that you can change your mind later about a CCU and melt it for store credit. This opens up the idea of setting yourself up to be able to buy back upgrades to limited or hull limited ships whenever you want. The only caveat is that hull limited ships are limited in both year round availability as well as inventory quantity. To give an example, the Constellation Phoenix is hull limited and only has a certain number of units that will be sold even at IAE. So there will be a point during IAE where you may not be able to pledge for one due to there not being any quantity left. Alternatively, limited ships are different in that there is no quantity to be depleted, just the lack of an opportunity to purchase throughout the year. The opportunity that presents itself when considering to leverage the CCU buyback token is that it gives you a bit more pledging freedom and in large part disconnects you from the artificial scarcity if you're able to grab limited or whole limited CCUs during events like IAE. 
So let's demonstrate. Let's say you want the Polaris and the Hammerhead, but for whatever reason, you have chosen to pay only to get the Hammerhead during the IAE event. However, you would like the opportunity to pick up the Polaris next year, in February, for example. Here is how you can achieve this. First, we can either choose an existing ship that we own or one that we don't own yet. From that ship, we can build a CCU token to the Polaris in the Pledge Store. Ideally, you want to find a ship to CCU from that is closest to the price of your target ship. This allows you to spend as little as possible to acquire the CCU token, and then you can spend the rest of the cost later, acquiring the ship you want to CCU from. The second step is, once purchased, we will wait 24 hours, as this is mandatory, and then melt the CCU token. This puts the CCU token into our buyback list. Third step, we then take the credits received and pledge for the hammerhead using those store credits. Final step, we have effectively reserved the option to pick up the Polaris in February. To achieve that, we buy back the CCU token. If we own the ship that we designated to CCU from, we can immediately apply the CCU. If not, we pledge for the always available ship that we chose for the ship to upgrade from and then apply the CCU. The only significant drawback is that the prices of the ships associated with the melted CCU can change, which will be reflected in the price of the CCU if you decide to buy it back. Now this could reflect positively for you as well. If the from ship's price increases, you should realize that discount. As with all of this, CIG can change this policy at any time, so please proceed with that understanding. The LTI token is considered to be a standalone pledge that contains LTI insurance or lifetime insurance. When you hear this term used, it is mostly linked to standard pledges of smaller ships or vehicles. This is due to the fact that they can effectively be used to CCU from those ships to most other ships and vehicles given their lower cost. They present a great opportunity to upgrade to just about any other ship or vehicle that you could ever want. Whatever you upgrade to will inherit the LTI or lifetime insurance. Now there really is no demonstration to be made here, but be on the lookout for cheap ship concepts that have LTI insurance and pick up one or more in anticipation for upgrading to your desired ship so that it gets LTI insurance. There really isn't any drawbacks to share here either, as it is probably the most direct concept of leveraging CCUs. The Warbond CCU token is the same as a standard CCU token. Instead, it has to be acquired using 100% new cash, and it inherits the best insurance between the two sides of the upgrade. The Warbond CCU is cheaper than your standard CCU at face value. The secondary benefit to Warbond CCUs is that if your base package has better insurance than the target, which is uncommon, you would keep that insurance. If the target upgrade pledge has the better insurance, you would inherit that insurance over your base insurance. So you always get the best out of the two options, no matter what. The other hidden benefit to this is that it presents an even greater discount if you can chain these upgrades together. As mentioned in my other video, I will try to share some of these upgrade paths on my channel during the IAE event. So please stay tuned and hit the notification bell to be made aware of those updates when they're available. There really isn't any drawbacks here as this too is fairly a direct concept of using CCUs to your benefit. So in conclusion, there's a few things you just want to remember and always keep in mind. Everything in this video is subject to change. CIG can change a policy at any given point in time, so I would not get married to any of these concepts, but definitely utilize them while they're still the way that they are. Finally, all ships will be earnable in-game. Please do not FOMO in, which is the fear of missing out. So if you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy this one where I share some tips and tricks for most of the big sales events throughout the year. But that's it for me. 
If you enjoyed the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.